I knew an episode like this would eventually come out. Because if you know Studio Trigger, you know they're known for making very wacky and crazy scenes. And this episode was just perfect for that. It was perfect for the Studio Trigger style. If you know what they've done in the past in their previous works, like for instance, Kill a Kill, you'll know that they have a really crazy and interesting style. And this episode went all in with just being completely trippy and very colorful, which that's what Studio Trigger is known for. And so, who would have thought, like, the first trippy episode we got is a Susie episode. And so, yeah, I know there's a lot of Susie fans out there, and myself included, I I am a Susie fan, she's probably best girl of the series, and I'm glad to have an episode finally focused on her after so many have been begging Studio Trigger to make an episode focused on her, because in all honesty, I'm just surprised it took this long just to have an episode focused on her. I mean, I'm glad that Studio Trigger has developed Akko, which I'm completely fine with, because that's what I wanted to see. She's the main character, she does need some development. Latte also got some development too, so I'm glad she got development, and so I've been waiting for, you know, Susie to get get her own individual episode, get to see a little bit more about her, dive into her mind, and we actually did legit dive into her mind in this fucking episode, and I'm like, yo, so we got a lot of Susie, so if you're a Susie fan, you love Susie, if she's your favorite character, Little Witch Academia, you got your feel with this episode, because Susie was like in every single conversation of this episode almost, and you're probably gonna love it, and on top of that, when you're in this journey inside of Susie's mind or her dream, you see a bunch of different Susies in different outfits, different attire, the way they look, the way their hairstyle is, just a bunch of different Susies Susie's overall, and I mean, if you just love Susie as a character, you're gonna just fucking love this episode, you're gonna just be like, oh my fucking god, like, best episode yet of Little Witch Academia, and I could honestly agree with you, because there, if there's one thing that I was stating last week and the week before that, I was saying that there was a formula, you know, a repeated pattern going on, and then last week I commended, you know, Studio Trigger for actually changing it up, but also proving that, you know, Akko is getting development, and in last week's episode was very different from the previous episodes. There was a lot of differences, and there was a lot of progression going on when it came to Akko's character. Well, you remember what I said in last week's episode review when I stated like, okay, Studio Trigger, I like what you're doing in this episode, but don't repeat this episode constantly or it would get like what you had in the first you know part of Little Witch Academia and just like that you know Studio Trigger they did not repeat last week's episode in fact this episode is probably the most different episode we have gotten Yet, yes, even more so than the last week's episode. Last week's episode, it still was relatively normal. It felt like it was kind of, even though it was different with the plot and some of the outcomes of it, it was still kind of, it fit in with what we've seen previously of Little Witch Academia. However, this episode, completely different. I mean, it's just straight up colorful, fun, wacky comedy inside of Susie's mind because she loves fucking mushrooms and all this type of shit and you're like, oh my god, like this episode is fucking funny as hell. I mean, when the episode starts off and I heard like that evil laugh going on, I honestly thought it was the teacher. You know, the professor that does that evil laugh and you always see like an episode open up with the, you know, the teacher, you know, pouring chemicals or whatever. I thought it was the teacher when the episode started off. I'm like, oh, here we go again. But no, it wasn't like that. It was actually Susie. She was experimenting, and she was actually going to experiment on Akko, but that did not happen, and then she used it on herself, which resulted in the entire conflict of the episode. So, let's look at what the plot structure of this episode was, and how different it is from the previous episodes. Number one, the first thing we saw in the earlier portion of the series, it was always Akko getting everyone into trouble, causing a lot of problems, and just stirring up things, and then they got in even more trouble at the end of the episode. Last week's episode, we saw development, progression with Akko, and it changed up the formula and we're seeing actually Akko becoming a better main character. Well, instead of Akko being the central point and focus of an episode and her being the one that causes problems or, you know, even to actually kind of be in some problems even though it's not her fault, this episode, it wasn't her fault at all. She was not to blame at all in this episode. Susie is the one that caused the conflict in this episode because she was going along with her experiments and then all of a sudden, you know, went out of whack. She went into like, you know, some form of, you know, coma, and she needed to be woken up by Akko to enter inside of her dream to wake her up. 
So the plot automatically just completely different from what we've seen previously. But then when you actually get inside of Susie's mind, it really has a nice message. And I, I don't know if Studio Trigger was trying to, you know, relay this message to us as the viewer of the show, but I really like what they were talking about when it came to the individual little thoughts inside of Susie's head. For instance, the different personalities, because this is something that does actually happen to everybody in real life. Like, let's bring up a very good example, okay? Let's say right now, you feel like, you know, you're thinking in your mind right now, you know what, I, I want to go, you know, go out hiking or something, okay? But then all of a sudden, as you're thinking that, you're like, ah, fuck that shit, just, I, I don't want to do that, I want to just sit here. Well, that's kind of what was going on with Susie. And every time there was these little thoughts going inside of her, these little desires or whatever, they would pop up a new Susie, which would look like whatever that desire is. And... As you know, when it comes to us as human beings, when we're thinking of things, usually we're like throw or push things aside that we're thinking like, ah, that's kind of stupid, or oh, we don't want to do that, oh, I'm too lazy to do that, whatever. You just push that, you know, shit aside in your mind, and you don't, you just go along with your day, and you don't think too much about it. However, Studio Trigger wanted to focus on that, showing that there is things that honestly, how people just rid themselves of a lot of things inside of them, like, you know, kill their certain emotions or parts of them that, you know, just don't make any sense. Like in this episode, we we see a trial by Susie's. They're just executing a bunch of different Susie's. Even this innocent looking Susie that looks like an innocent little girl. We found out she's not, obviously, because of, you know, what happened later on in the episode. But overall, though, some of the thoughts or things you think of in your life, sometimes it's best not to think that. And that's kind of what this entire trial was about. It was just showing that sometimes we as human beings, we constantly get rid of parts of ourselves for we don't cause harm to others and ourselves. And I like that entire message that Studio Trigger tried to kind of point out, and I mean, they do do messages, they do, they've done it with Kill a Kill, Kids Naive and all that, I mean, they've done it in the past, I've seen them do it, and so it's probably to be expected that they would put a message to Little Witch Academia, and I'm assuming that's kind of what they're getting at, just showing how, you know, we as people would go through everyday life of how we have to probably stamp out certain emotions or desires we have to be able to function normally and not be affected at all. So yeah, that, that was a really cool little, you know, I guess, theme to the episode. Anyways, though, let's talk about the actual monster sequence when, you know, the Susie just went crazy and started devouring the other personalities and shit. I'm like, yo, that looks so fucking fucked up. Like, when you see Susie become a monster and you hear the music in the background, I'm like, oh my god, this is just amazing. The music by far, I think, in this episode was the best usage of the music in Little Witch Academia yet. Because that song really carried that part. I mean, it was great visuals, love the color palette and all that, but that song really carried that scene when you just see S fucking Susie chasing Akko inside of the car, and you just see Akko fucking riding away, and you just see this big-ass fucking Susie monster just coming after him. I'm like, yo, that is fucking hilarious. And then you had a fairy tale at the end, like she turned into a freaking, like, dragon, and when you saw the thorns and stuff, I forget which... Which Disney uh, movie that's from? I think that's either, it's either Snow. Is it Snow White? No, no, it ain't Snow White. Sleeping Beauty? Is it Sleeping Beauty? Yeah, yeah, I forget the fucking name. You, it, it was a witch that turned into a dragon, and then there was a knight that stood up to the witch, and then eventually won, and then saved the princess. I think that was unconscious or sleeping. I think it's Sleeping Beauty. It's been like a decade since I have watched that movie. It's been a long time. But I remember that that scene right there, what I saw in this episode, it reminded me a lot of that. Now, I wonder if Studio Trigger was referencing that iconic scene from a Disney movie. I could be wrong here, but I'm assuming so. Anyways, I do like overall how this episode tried to really dive into Susie's mind and actually show us kind of what she really cares about and overall what she feels about Akko or how she feels about Akko and, you know, how she continues to e mess with Akko all the time, but she does truly care and you can see that she does have, you know, a good friendship with her. This episode of Little Witch Academia, I have to say it's my second favorite episode. I still prefer last week's episode over this one. The reason why is not that I dislike, you know, Susie because she's my favorite character of the series. She's best girl. However, I just loved how last week's episode really dived into Akko and developed her quite a bit and really took that initiative. And even in this episode, it started off with showing that Akko still, once again, is carrying that development because she got up and was ready to go to class and get to work. So there's still the development carrying over, which Studio Sugar hasn't forgotten, which 
I'm very happy with. However, this episode was just fun. It was very, very fun. It was for the Susie fans, but I, like I said, I just preferred, you know, last week's progression with Aqua, which is my personal preference. However, funny fucking episode. Like, this is probably the funniest episode of the series. Hands down. Anyways, you all have a wonderful day or night wherever you live. Please be safe. Chibi